Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video in the Java series. In this episode, I want to explain to you what are streams. In the last episode, I showed you how you can loop through collections using uh, iterators, for each loops, um, for loops, and then finally I showed you how to use the stream on a collection and also how to use the for each operation upon that stream. Um, since this is a mini series on streams, you need to actually know what is a stream. So this is what I'm going to explain to you this episode because um, sometimes whenever you're reading tutorials or stuff like that, they don't really explain what streams are very well. So I want to attempt to, to I want to attempt to explain it to you uh, the best way possible, so you can have a good understanding before we continue learning how to use streams. So the first thing we want to do is a little boring, but um, it's going to help our understanding because Java. Um, the Java docs here have a very good explanation of what streams are, okay? So, before we begin though, make sure you have a good understanding of functional interfaces and lambdas. Just basically know how to use a lambda and um, functional interfaces. I have videos on both those things, functional interfaces and lambdas, so if you're interested in that, then make sure to watch those videos. Um, but besides that, let's continue. So. Um, if we look at the Java docs here, we have the interface stream, and then there's a generic type. So a stream um, is a collection of elements. So it's not a collection as in, you know, a Java collection that you already know about, like an array list. Rather, it's a thing that contains a bunch of elements. In this case, it can be any type of object because it's generic. And it says a sequence of elements supporting sequential and parallel aggregate operations. The following example illustrates an aggregate operation using stream and in stream. So we have the stream interface here, but we also have some other types of streams for specific data types like the integer. So we can open this up, check it out. So this is another interface um, and we'll look at those later. Don't worry about that. And so here's an example. Integer sum is equal to widgets.stream filter map to integer sum. Let me zoom in a little bit for you guys here. So sum. So this is a stream. You can think of it as a pipeline. So you have a source, which is your widgets. So this is where the data comes from. So you open up a new stream on that and then you filter each one of them. So you're just sorting it essentially um, by sorting it by its color. So if any of these, if any of the widgets inside of the widgets thing that you're streaming through has the color of red, then that's going to continue. So then you're going to sort all of the red ones out. So then um, you're going to go to map to integer, which is another operation. So that's going to convert each of these um, widgets. I don't know what the object is. I'm assuming it's some sort of widget object. It's going to convert each one of these into an integer by calling w.getWeight. And that's going to give you an integer. So at the beginning here, we can assume that the stream started with a stream of widgets. And then after that, um, it was filtered. So it's still a stream of widgets. And then after that, it was mapped to an integer. So it was converted to an integer. So now it's a stream of integers. And finally, we have a terminal operation, which gives you the final result, which is a sum. All of that may be, that may be a little confusing. So that's why I'm going to, in this episode, explain what a stream even is. So um, yeah, but that's just an example, right? So it may be confusing, but hopefully by the end of this, you're going to understand what all of that means. Okay. So we'll, let's just keep reading before we explain it a little more. So it says, in this example, widgets is a collection of widgets. Good. So that is right. So it's a stream of widgets. So we're grabbing that stream from a collection of widgets. So it says we create a stream of widget objects via collection.stream, filter it to produce a stream containing only the red widgets, and then transform it into a stream of integer values representing the weight of each red wid widget. Then the stream is summed up to produce, produce a total weight. In addition to stream, which is a stream of object references, there are primitive specializations for integer stream, long stream, and double stream, which we saw a second ago all of which are referred to as streams and conform to the characteristic characteristics and restrictions described here. Um, to perform a computation, stream operations are composed into a stream pipeline. A stream pipeline consists of a source, which might be an array, a collection, a journal, a generator function, an IO channel, etc. And the source in this case was a collection of widgets, like we saw last, epi last episode as well, we had a collection of strings and array list of strings. So that's our source. And then you can think of this as a pipeline. So you have a pipeline with the source and an ending, and then in between you're doing stuff to the elements of that pipeline. Um, and then what else have we got here? So we got, uh, those are the, in so these are the intermediate operations, you know, the things in between the source and the ending. And then at the end we have a terminal operation, which is the final thing that is being done, which ends the stream. And it says streams are lazy. Computation on the source data is only performed when the terminal operation is initiated and source elements are consumed only as needed. So they're efficient in that sense of the thing. And we'll look at 
um, what lazy means later, don't worry, we'll look at it as much as we can. So collections and streams, while bearing some superficial similarities, have different goals. Collections are primarily concerned with the efficient management of and access to their elements. By contrast, streams do not provide means to directly access or manipulate their elements and are instead concerned with declaratively describing their source and their computational operations, which will be for performed in an aggregate on that source. However, if the provided stream operations do not offer the desired functionality, the base, the base stream iterator and base stream split iterator operations can be performed in a controlled traversal. So just to break that down, essentially, it's just telling you, reminding you that a collection and a stream is not the same thing. They are very, very similar in many ways, but they are different. And um, yeah, so the collection is where the stream gets its data from, and the stream is just a series, it's like a pipe, you can think of it, that does a bunch of stuff, operations upon that data, okay? And it says, a stream pipeline, like the widgets example above, can be viewed as a query on the stream source, aka a collection maybe. Unless the source was explicitly designed for concurrent modifications, such as a concurrent hash map, unpredictable or erroneous behavior may result from modifying the stream source while it is being queried. So what that means is just don't mess with the, don't mess with the realist um, that your stream is coming from while the stream is, you know, doing stuff, right? Makes sense. Uh, most stream operations accept parameters that describe user-specific behavior, such as the lambda expression. Okay, so what this means, this whole part here means is that, and we're going to see this in a second, is that each of these um, intermediate operations that are done upon the stream accept a functional interface as its parameter. And of course, as you know, hopefully, functional interfaces can be um, replaced by lambdas. A lambda is simply a shorthand way of doing a functional interface or implementing the uh, method of a functional interface. Um, but yeah, so this plays into the idea of functional programming, the functional programming paradigm. Um, hopefully my mic is not hearing all the P's, pa 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 pa. Anyway, so, um, yeah, the functional programming paradigm obviously, um, has to do with functions, is made up of functions at its core, that's why it's called functional programming. And, um, Java in, it, Java in itself is not a functional programming language per se, but they did try to achieve a, um, they did try to implement functional programming into Java with its JDK 8 release, and that comes with streams, lambdas, functional interfaces, and all that. So we're going to be using all those things together to try and have code that performs functionally, and meaning that it's going to conform to the functional paradigm, essentially, um, as much as possible. And um, yeah, furthermore, functional interfaces are what's called higher order functions, and a higher order function is simply a function that either returns a higher order function or accepts a higher order function as a parameter. And so again, that's just Java's way of trying to achieve functional programming because it is becoming more and more popular nowadays. Um, yeah. And anyway, let's continue. Just see what else we can read here. Um, yeah, everything else is, you know, you can read that on your own. It's not nothing too profound at this moment. But as you can see, the stream interface here has a bunch of different methods that you can call. So we have um, collect, concat, count, distinct, empty, find any, find first, flat map for each, uh, generate, iterate, a bunch of different things, map to int, map to long, blah, blah, blah. And we're going to look at a bunch of these, if not all of them. Um, and yeah, so let's go ahead and jump into IntelliJs just so we can see what we can do with this. Actually, before I do that, I want to show you some illustrations to hopefully um, solidify what uh, your understanding of what a stream is before, before we continue. So I have two images here. Okay, so the first image is you can think of a stream as either uh, a pipeline or an assembly line, okay? And that's why streams are called pipelines because they're a collection of um, operations that are done upon a piece of data that returns a piece of data at its end, usually. Anyway, so this is the makeup of a stream, okay? So you have a stream source, which can be a collection, an array, um, IO, um, streams, anything like that. So you're getting, so this is just merely representing the data. And then that data is turned into a stream, right? And then you have intermediate operations upon that data, which can be uh, mapping, which is just converting it to another object, filtering, which is just um, sorting essentially, uh, peak, limit. These are all intermediate operations. And each of these intermediate operations return a stream object from that operation. So you start off with a stream object, and then you do an intermediate operations, which is gonna do something to those elements, which returns a new stream object, and then you can just have a chain of operations that return stream objects uh, with the data modified. 
and then at the end of it you have what's called a terminal operation which takes that stream of elements and then does something to it so you have a for each which we actually saw last episode which is just simply a just like a basically a regular for each like an enhanced for loop um, being done upon the data of the stream you also have reduce you have collect and you can use collect to for example, um, collect it into a new collection. So let's say you start off with an array list, you do some stuff to it with intermediate operations, and then you can use the collect terminal operation to uh, collect that into a totally new um, array list or another da data type or structure rather. Um, uh, count and then find any, et cetera. So, yep, hopefully that makes sense. So you have a stream source, a stream term, uh, terminal operation, so a beginning and an end, just like a pipe. And then inside of that pipe, things are being done and that's a that's a very good way to visualize it basically let me give you one more visualization here you can also think of it as an assembly line so let's say you have like a factory a car factory you start off with raw materials and then down the line you have these robots working on the car turning those raw materials into new things they're being shaped and molded continually down the assembly line and then um, at the end of the assembly line it is turned into what a final product a car so that, it, that plays into the same idea. So you start off with the, a source, a raw material of whatever this metal could be, aluminum or something like that. And then you have the assembly line itself, which is the operations being done, in this case, robots. So that's the terminal, I mean, the intermediate operations. Intermediate mean, meaning it's happening, happening like intermediately in the middle, I guess. And then you, at the end, you finally have the final product, a car, which is the terminal operation. So that produces a car, okay? Hopefully that all makes sense. I think um, illustrations like this do explain stuff much better than, you know, just reading off the Java docs because they can be, um, it can be hard to come out with knowledge just by reading this alone. So yeah, hopefully that helps you. Okay. So now let's jump into IntelliJ to see a good example of what um, streams are even more so. So first things first, how can we get a stream? We saw last episode that we can get a stream from a collection. So we can have different types of collections, uh, array lists, uh, ma uh, sets, maps. So let's say we have a hash set, a hash set of strings just for, actually we'll do integer and we'll say um, numbers is equal to um, a new hash set, boom. And then numbers dot was add. We can do two numbers dot add uh, five numbers dot, oops, numbers dot add uh, 17 numbers dot add 50 you get the point right so you can add a bunch of stuff to this collection here and then now we can get a stream from that collection by doing numbers dot stream and this returns a stream of integers very very similar looking to an iterator so you can do stream dot iterator and this returns an iterator of integers so very very similar and as we saw before a um a collection is not the only way to get a stream so let's say we have an array we'll have an array of strings We'll just call this names again, just for simplicity's sake. So name, string, or string array names is equal to Bob, Joe, Bob2. And so if we want to get a stream from this array, we can do arrays.stream and just provide the array that we want to get the stream from. So in this case, so there's a generic one here, so we can just provide anything. So names, and that will um, return a stream of that generic or whatever type the array is obviously so this will be a stream of strings okay okay let me give you one more example of how to obtain a stream um, like I said there's a bunch of different ways you can do this but collections are definitely the most popular way to do it by far um, so what else we have stream dot of so this is another way you can do it all you got to do is pass into the variable variable arguments var args uh, just the objects that you want to be inside of the stream. So we'll do stream of, uh, we'll say, what do we want to do? Let's do some doubles. So 1.23, 2, 2.0, 5, 3.2, um, 1.0. So this will return an, a stream of integer objects because of course the data type that we're passing in is a um, integer. So that's another way to get a stream. And so now that we know the basic ways of getting streams, let's look at um, a basic example of a stream pipeline, okay? And a pipeline, what I mean by that is just simply a, a stream that has um, operations done upon it. So you have a source, a source of a stream. So this is gonna be this. So we're gonna do numbers.stream. 
and then we have intermediate operations upon that, and then we have a terminal operation. So that represents a pipeline of a stream. So let's say that we want to sort, let's say that we only want to get numbers above a certain amount, like numbers only greater than five, or we'll do six. So to do something like that, we use filter. And don't worry about, if you're not familiar with filter, don't worry, we're gonna have episodes for that. And as you can see, filter accepts as a parameter, if you do control P, a predicate. And a predicate you might be familiar with is a functional interface that essentially takes a parameter and then returns a Boolean. So if we look, if we do new predicate and we do yeah, control Q, it says represents a predicate, a Boolean valued function of one argument. So you pass in one argument, you do whatever you need to do and then return true or false. So it says this is a functional interface whose object, uh, whose functional method is test. Okay. So if we want to implement this, we just press tab and then now it generates the code. So um, this functional interface has one abstract method within it called test. And it's our job now to, um, first we're passing in the data type of the stream, which is in this case an integer. So it's taking um, each element of the stream, passing it into this function here, and you just need to um, return true or false. So you could simply return true every time, or you can perform a test on it. You can put whatever code you want inside of here. So if integer is greater than uh, six return. Oops. We'll do five actually it makes more sense. Return true. And then otherwise return false. So and we can simplify this obviously, but you get the point. So again, just to recap, we have a stream here grabbing its data from this source here, and then it's taking each of those elements and passing them into the um, method of this predicate here one by one. And then that predicate method is going to return true or false. And then this filter here is going to return a new stream which is going to contain all of the elements that passed this test here. And since it returned a new stream, we can do even more operations upon it. So we can add another filter, we can do whatever we want. But before we continue with that, obviously we can simplify this. As you know, hopefully you're familiar with lambdas, like I said, um, lambdas can replace functional, interface, functional interfaces to make them more simple. So we can just do replace with lambda, and now we have a lambda here that does the same thing, but in a more simplified manner. And we can make this even more simple even more simple, and look at that, very, very simple, very functional because it conveys exactly what you want it to do without having to have all the garbage and the fluff there. Now let's say for some reason we want to convert each of these integers in our stream into a string. For that we can use the map intermediate operation. So there's not a map to string um, method here that we can do upon the stream interface that we have, but there is a map and we can use that to map our elements into a different object type, okay? Now in this case, it does not ask for a predicate because we're not testing if something is true or false. It's asking for a function, um, functional interface. So we can do um, new function. And the reason I'm doing this is just so you can see how functional interfaces work in a little more detail. So this one accepts one parameter and then you return a object. So we can do whatever we want to that parameter and then return the object that we're trying to map it to. So we can do string dot value of, and then pass in the integer, and that should return a string um, version of this integer that we have passed in. And then let's simplify this. Boom. Just can we do it further? There we go. So that's even more simplified now. And you should be able to do this actually, get rid of that, you don't need that. So what this will do is take the stream of elements returned from filter, and then map each one of them into a string. And that's gonna, of course, return a new stream because it's a intermediate operation. So to continue the pipeline, we need a new stream. All right, so at this point, let's say that we're done doing exactly what we want to do. We filtered everything and then we mapped it to a string. Let's say that we want to convert this into a new hash set so we can hold all of our um, elements that we just you know, modified, essentially. So to do that, we can do a terminal operation, ca uh, collect. So there's many different things you can do with collect, but one of, them, one of them that you can see here is you can do collect and then pass in collectors.toset and this will return a set of strings. So let's do that. And real quick, just so you know that it's a terminal operation, how you can tell is by if you do control Q to see the Java docs, um, you can see that it does not return a stream this time because it's the end of the pop, uh, pipeline. Uh, so it doesn't need to return a new stream object in this case because since this is terminal, it's just gonna give you whatever um, you need. In this case, we need a, a set, right? So we're converting our stream of elements into a set. And so it, it makes sense to return a set rather than a stream because that's the end of the pipeline. 
Again, the only reason we're returning a stream for these intermediate operations is so that we can do more operations, like another intermediate operation or a terminal operation like we're doing here. Anyway, so hopefully that makes sense. So that returns a set. Let's store that set into an object. So we can do set um, string because we mapped it to a string, remember? So import set and then we'll say uh, new numbers is equal to that. And there we go. So now we've taken all of the numbers from our original hash set, streamed it, filtered it, mapped it into a string, and then collected it into a totally new um, collection here. And now we can print that out just to see what it looks like. So new numbers, oops, new numbers. And let's see what we get in the console. There we go, so we get 17 and 50. Why is that? Because 17 and 50 are the only numbers above five and uh, they don't look like strings, but they are strings behind the scenes. All right, so that's it for my explanation of what are streams. Um, I hope this was a good explanation because I had a trouble understanding it when I first started. So if you understand it, then you can continue with this series um, actually knowing the fundamentals. So you'll be able to understand everything else very, very easily. So in the next uh, videos, we're gonna be going over these uh, intermediate operations like filtering, mapping, and everything else. So stay tuned for all of that. Like always, in the description below, I'll be leaving a link to my um, Discord server so you can join that server, you know, get involved in the community, um, you know, ask for help, uh, anything like that. So make sure you join, get involved, say hi. And also I'll be leaving a link to the code for this episode, so make sure you bookmark that for future use so you don't forget anything. You can come back to it later on if you need to. Um, it'll be, you know, written up fully with comments and all that stuff, so... Um, you don't have to rewatch the video, but your views are greatly appreciated, of course. Haha. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's pretty much it. Oh, also one more thing is if you want to support this channel, make sure to click the join button below this video so you can join as a member for as low as 99 cents a month. Um, with that comes with some cool perks. You get early access to all of my new videos, um, a cool rank on my Discord server, and also you can just see your name on the screen like you see right now. So if that sounds cool to you, feel free to join. And that's it. So if you like this video, leave a like. If you need to see more, subscribe and peace.